Hello, so today we're going to be taking a look at the Casio FX83 GTX. So this is the newer model than this guy over here, the old um, Casio that we would have had in class previously. So um, in particular we're going to be taking a look at how to find standard deviation of a list of numbers in a second. But I suppose the big thing that we need to be we need to realize is that the symbol for standard deviation is going to be this guy here, this sigma x. So somewhere in this calculator, a method for finding standard deviation is located. So um, let's get into it straight away. So we're going to find the standard deviation of this list of numbers here. Um, and we notice before we get started that there's three number 52s. So we're going to maybe have a kind of a a slightly more complicated system that we need to, just to kind of make life a little bit easier when it comes to inputting repeated data. Or indeed, if we had a frequency table, it would make life a little bit easier as well. So let's get our calculator set up. So we go into menu and we want statistics. So we want this guy over here, it looks like statistics, and that's option number two. So we select two. And then as in the previous calculator, we're going to select number one, and that gets us a table where we can input this data here. So I could go 14, 17, and I could get to here and I could go 43, 52, 52, 52. But I, I, I think that's kind of time wasting. So I'm going to set up that I can put in the frequency as well as the, um, the, the variable value. So to do that, we go shift setup and we then scroll down until we get to statistics up here and we select number one. We want to turn frequency on, so we select number one again, and we now see that we have a second column up here called frequency. So our first value is 14, so let's input him, and the default is a number one, okay? And then we go 17 equals, then we go 21 equals, then we go 36 equals, then we go 43 equals, then we go 52 equals, and then we go 53 equals, then we go 57 equals, and then we go 60 equals. And we can scroll back up to where we had our 52. And there he is there. And we change that into a 3. So we now have it that we have this information inside the calculator's mind. As normal, we go AC. And we now go into options. And we want number two and that gives us a list of information here which is kind of nice and the thing we want is sigma x here so our standard deviation is 16.11 so the two decimal places the answer is 16.11 to standard deviation. So that's pretty nice. But we also see we get some other information in here. We get um, the sum of all of the values. That might be handy for some reason. And we also get the mean value, which is x bar. So just like this is the symbol for standard deviation, the symbol for mean is going to be x bar. And we know x bar is equal to 41.55 correct two decimal places so that's kind of useful so I suppose what we have here is a single display that gives us all of the information that we want we just need to know that the symbol for standard deviation is this guy here and if you want to use this system to work out the mean well we need to know the symbol for mean is this guy here x bar so sigma x is standard deviation x bar is mean so let's go through that again. So this is where our calculator would normally be. To get, to get the standard deviation, we go um, menu, and then we want this guy here. So we select number two, and we want one minus var, and then we input our data. So we go 14 equals 17 equals 21 equals 36 equals 43 equals 52 equals, I could put in 52 three times if I wanted to, it's not that hard. 53 equals 57 equals 60 equals. And then I hit AC, so the information is now in the calculator's mind. 
and I then come along and I go into options, OPTN, that gets me up to here and I go number two and from there I read that sigma x is um, this guy here 16.101 or 109 sorry. Okay, thank you.